Yeah, that, that sort of reminds me of, who was it, T Tony O'Reilly remarked one time about the uh, responsibility of a CEO that, that the very first job of the CEO was to search through his organization and find that person who had the initiative and the brains, the determination, all of the qualities to be his logical successor and then fire the guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. the, uh, there's no question, I, I think the reputation of Berkshire as being a very good home for companies, uh, particularly private companies, uh, but a good home for companies, uh, uh, I don't think that reputation is dependent on me or Charlie. It may take a little, uh, you know, there'll be a little testing period for whoever uh, takes over in that respect. But, you know, basically, we've got the money to do the deals. We'll have the money to do the deals subsequently. People can see how our subsidiaries operate in the future. And, and the truth is that uh, I think some of the other executives are, going, are getting better known. But there will be a... And I'll, I'll tell you this, if things get bad enough, you don't have to worry, they'll be calling us no matter what. Uh, so I, I do not worry about the, the so-called deal flow, which is a term I hate, but uh, I don't think there's, I think that's dependent on Berkshire and not dependent on me. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned, my phone isn't ringing off the hook with good deals, so that apparently this big winning personality or something is not delivering for you. <laughs> so it may be it may be the next the next person will will uh, be even more get even more calls. Uh, I Berkshire the reputation belongs to Berkshire now, and that and uh, we are for somebody that cares out of out of business that they and their parents and maybe their grandparents lovingly build over decades. If they care about where that business ends up being after for one reason or another, they don't want to keep it or can't keep it in the family. Uh, we absolutely uh, are the first call and we will continue to be the first call whether Charlie or I answer the phone or somebody else does. So, Charlie? Well, a lot of the subsidiaries have for a long time already been making all kinds of acquisitions with people they know and we don't. So it's already happening. And in fact, it's happening more there than it is at headquarters. So Don't tell them, Charlie. You're, you're getting your wish. <laughs> and uh, it is weird that about... 99% of the public companies that change hands in terms of control change hands in a sort of auction provided, presided over by an investment banker. And the people that buy are usually just leverage it to the gills, and then if it starts doing a little better, they re-leverage it. And that money is coming out of the charitable endowments and pension plans who are making these highly leveraged investments in all these companies changing hands at very high prices. Sooner or later, this is not going to work perfectly. Yeah. And it's going to have an unpleasant episode. And I think we'll be around and in good shape at that time. There was one fellow who came to me many years ago, and uh, he had a wonderful business. And he had been worried because he had seen uh, a friend of his died, and the the problems that arose later when the managers, to some extent, tried to take advantage of the the widow, and uh, and it, it became a disaster. So he said he thought about it a lot the previous year, and he decided he didn't want to sell the business to a competitor who would be a logical buyer because they would fire all of his people and the CFO that would remain, and the, you know, all up and down the line, they'd all be the acquirers people. He didn't want to do that to his people. And then he thought, and he didn't want to sell it to a, a private equity firm because he felt they'd leverage it up 
he never liked the leverage that much, and then they'd just resell it later on to somebody, so it would be totally out of control of what he wanted to do. And he wanted to keep running it himself, so he said, he said, Warren, he said, he said, it isn't that you're such a great guy, he says, it's you're, you're the only one left, so. <laughs> Uh, Berkshire will continue to be the only one left in many cases. <laughs>